3. Tertullian and Beyond It seems, however, that by the time that Tertullian was writing in the late 2nd and early 3rd centuries, the Eucharist had become separated from the Agape feast. In his Apologeticus, dated between circa 198 and 204 AD, Tertullian makes the following statement about the Agape feast. Our feast explains itself by its name. The Greeks call it Agape, that is, affection. Whatever it costs, our outlay in the name of piety is gain, since with the good things of the feast we benefit the needy. Not as it is with you do parasites aspire to the glory of satisfying their licentious propensities, selling themselves for a belly feast to all disgraceful treatment. But, as it is with God himself, a peculiar respect is shown to the lowly. If the object of our feast be good, in the light of that consider its further regulations. As it is an act of religious service, it permits no vileness or immodesty. The participants, before reclining, taste first a prayer to God. As much as eaten as satisfies the craving of hunger, as much as drunk as befits the chaste. They say it is enough, as those who remember that even during the night they have to worship God, they talk as those who know that the Lord is one of their auditors. After manual ablution, that is washing of hands, and the bringing in of lights, each is asked to stand forth and sing, as he can, a hymn of God, either one from Holy Scripture or one of his own composing, a proof of the measure of our drinking. As the feast commenced with prayer, so with prayer it is closed. We go from it, not like the troops of mischief-doers nor bands of vagabonds, nor to break out into licentious acts, but to have as much care of our modesty and chastity as if we had been at a school of virtue rather than a banquet. It is clear from the references here to worshipping God in the night and the bringing in of lights that the Agape feast ran into the evening. However, in his treatise De Corona, or The Chaplet, dated circa 204 AD, Tertullian makes the following statement. We take also, in congregations before daybreak, and from the hand of none but the presidents, the sacrament of the Eucharist, which the Lord both commanded to be eaten at mealtimes and enjoined to be taken by all alike. It appears from a comparison of these two passages that the Eucharist had in Tertullian's time been separated from the Agape feast and was celebrated in the morning before dawn, while the latter continued to be celebrated in the evening. It is doubtful there was ever complete uniformity in the way the various churches throughout the Roman Empire celebrated the Agape feast, but the above account indicates the general practice. Canon 28 of the Council of Laodicea, which took place some time between 343 and 381 AD, forbade the holding of Agape feasts in churches, although Agape feasts were not forbidden altogether. The Council of Gangra, held some time between 325 and 381 AD, defended the Agape feasts and anathematized anyone who despised them or those who attended them. The practice of holding Agape feasts in churches, however, does not seem to have come to an end entirely with the Council of Laodicea, since Canon 74 of the Council of Trullo, or Quinisext, Council in 692 AD, repeats the Council of Laodicea's ban. It seems the Agape feast eventually fell into complete disuse after this.